Welcome to Seven Trumpets Prepper, and in this video today, I'm going to show you how to make a passive solar air heater using some simple materials. So let's take a look at it now. So to begin this project, what we're going to do is first we're going to have our corrugated cardboard material. Now I want to show you very carefully right here that you can see that there is multi-layer. Now you could probably use a two-ply board. I would not use a single ply board. I just wouldn't. Uh, I've noticed that uh, when I was at work one day, we were tossing this corrugated cardboard and it got me thinking that um, a lot of people build passive solar heaters. They'll take like metal barn roofing and they'll put it in a container and obviously I'm going to be doing um, one myself on cans here soon where that you run cans through and let the air run through it. But this right here, as far as passive solar air heater, I got to thinking this would probably fly. And so what we're going to do is you're going to need a piece of corrugated cardboard uh, the size appropriate for your window and you need to be able to cut it so that when you put it in it'll fit snug because you're wanting air, you're wanting to actually get a double benefit. You're wanting, If this is your window, you've got to imagine this is your window in place for a moment. You're going to have a gap between there and then this will be painted black obviously. And then you're going to have all this too that the air is flowing up through. So you're going to actually get a double benefit. They're going to, it's going to be like a chimney flume. You've got air coming up through this. You've got air passing between the glass and the window and this right here in the heat. And the heat's going to make it rise. Okay, so that's you're going to need that in first. And then you're going to either need a tape measure or a level. And I'm going to use a level because I just want to help make straight lines by using a square. I'm going to use that combination together there to make my lines. If you want to use a tape measure and kind of rough it out, that's fine too. You're going to need a temperature gauge after a while because we want to check and see how good uh, this thing heats up. And as you can see right now, it's at room temperature. It's about 70 in here, so thing keeps pretty good temp. If you've got one of those fancy laser guns, good for you. I need to get me one of those myself. Sticky pads, the command strips, I'm going to use this to stick it to the window, and that'll kind of give me that much gap right there. So like I said, there'll be a gap of air between the window, and you'll have the air coming up through the corrugated cardboard. I've got a box cutter blade knife. Uh, do not use a dull knife for this. You want your edges to be perfectly straight. If you want to go the poor boy method, there's always the black duct tape. Um, you can actually cover the cardboard with the duct tape if you wanted to. If you just really had to do this in the fly in emergency, I'm just saying, you know, there's so many uses for duct tape. And you can also use that to help stick it to the surface of the glass. That's only for hard times. Do it right while you can. <clears throat> and black Rust-Oleum high heat paint. The reason I say use this paint is because that should you ever get the cardboard as hot as 450 degrees, congratulations to you because you've probably just set that sucker on fire. But in the meantime, just to protect the cardboard and protect yourself from getting something too hot, just spray it with a high heat um, because that way it will be definitely blacked out and it will draw a lot of heat in and it won't, you won't have to worry about the temperature issues on it. So that's it. Um, with that said, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go mark my window and then we'll cut this, we'll paint it, we'll let that dry, stick it to the window, and then we'll get our results. So let's get going. Now guys, remember to measure twice and cut once, especially when you've got material that's hard to come by. Uh, this corrugated industrial cardboard is kind of hard to come by unless you're working in a warehousing situation or your uh, where that you can get shipping and receiving materials constantly okay so make sure measure your window twice measure your cutting surface twice then cut it so I'm gonna cut this out and then we'll move to the painting okay as we can see right here I've cut that to the proper dimensions as far as the width and I may trim the height just a little bit later we'll see how the air gap is but now at this point I'm gonna take this out we'll get her painted up and get ready to move to the next part now guys, as you're painting this, make sure to get your coat on it very even. If you've got enough paint, I advise you to go back across it again. The darker, the better. Uh, the more heat that's going to build up in the window surface from the sun. Uh, try not to do it on a windy day like today. i got a storm coming in, so we may have to do the test results tomorrow. But as far as painting this and everything, just make sure to give it a good, even coat across. We'll be ready here shortly to go put the stickies on it and get that up in the window. So 
So at this point now, I have fitted the piece into place in this window that I'm wanting to use this as a solar passive air heater. And I have looked at the area and I've got a good gap up top where that the air can come across. And I also have a decent gap at the bottom that if I can get past my cactus, that once I pull that up into place with the command strips, I'm gonna have a really good gap on each end. And that is awesome because that air will hit right there and roll off into this room. So what we're going to do now is I'm gonna pull this back out, put the strips on it and put it back into place permanent. And that way, if I do wanna pull it off though, um, and have just this window use I can with the command strips and just leave the sticky part uh, with the Velcro left on the glass on the one side and have the other left on my board. Now, a note I would make right here is you could put, you could go and get some of that, I think Krylon makes it, is it's chalkboard paint. So like you could have this, you know, kind of decorative, you could, um, or you could get the magnetic paint, make it a magnet board. I mean, you could paint the other side of this and make it very useful. Um, and get a multi-function out of that so it just ain't this nasty looking cardboard backside. So I'll consult my wife on that and find out what she wants. But anyway, there it is in place right now and I'll get this down and we'll get it fixed up. Now I can't overstress enough guys to remember that this strip right here, it's got to form a gap between the window. That way you're getting a double benefit. You're getting the air between this to the bottom and you're getting a gap uh, you're getting the air to come through all these gaps here. Now I'm also going to take a command strip and put right down here at the bottom and that way it helps buffer that away from the window at the bottom too because I don't want it to sag and lean in against the window. So there we go. I've got the strips in place and now I'm going to permanently mount that into the window uh, for the winter time anyway and then when summer comes uh, all you've got to do is just pull that away from the velcro and you're good to go. Now what we're going to do at this point right here is as you can see that we're at room temperature right now. It's about 70 degrees. Now what I'm going to do is undo this from its holder and I'm going to mount this up in the top of the solar air heater and here in an hour or so. It's kind of partly sunny, partly cloudy today. I'm going to test it today and I'm also going to wait and test this on a scalding hot day as well and kind of see where that we stand temperature wise. So here's what the solar passive air heater looks like uh, from the outside of the house there. And as you can see, um, if you get your command strips in the right areas, you can probably tuck that without that being seen. And it's kind of just hidden at that point. But I've got the gauge in on top of it right now and we'll hopefully see uh, some positive results here in a little while. I want to see that get up to hopefully, uh, I'm hoping for 120 degrees, that would just be epic. But we'll see what we get here in just a bit. The sun's starting to come out and get a little brighter and hopefully we'll have some great results. So we've had the solar air heater in the window for about, I think, 10, 15 minutes, and we're already up to 80 degrees, so we've jumped 10 degrees uh, higher than that which it is in the house temperature right now, and I've got to run out and go do a few things, so I'm gonna leave this, and hopefully when I come back, I wanna see that around 90 or 100 degrees. So guys, the clouds rolled in yesterday and the snow is now falling, so I won't be able to test the heat of the solar air heater today, but hopefully the sun will come out here tomorrow or in the next day or so and we can get another test of it. I got it up to about 81, 82 degrees yesterday, and so we'll just see where it goes from there on the next go round. So guys, it's a bright, sunshiny day outside, um, finally two days later. And let me zoom in here on this, see if we can get up to it. Now, it's already climbing. Um, looks like we're about to pass 85. Temperature's continuing to climb. Now, I want to get to 120 if possible, but I'm not going to try to be too greedy, um, being that this is just a cardboard one. But you can see how quickly the temperature's rising. And see, that's what I'm saying is passive solar heating. You do not have to have the fan uh, when hard times come. All you've got to do is just have some simple materials and you can have some heat and I'm so glad this is climbing quickly uh, while that I'm filming this because I mean obviously it's not being faked right there it is and you can feel the heat uh, radiating off this boy it is warm up there I mean it is like a sauna so I'm gonna give this a minute or two and I'm going to see if I can get up to a buck 20 now uh, with giving it some time up there so we'll see here in a minute we're almost to 110 
um, and that has continued to trickle up. I know we can get a 105 degrees about right on the money, 105, 106, and I'm tickled pink with that for it just being a uh, piece of cardboard and some painting. Now, I will tell you, to make sure and get it as tight as possible, I ended up with a little bit of gap between the window. You can see it's really tight over there, so that's letting some of the air by, but just make sure and work that gap out and to have you a decent gap at the top to let the air come off and it's very cool at the bottom so it's doing the chimney effect well but um, just some notes on this is that it's like 40 something degrees I think it's like 46 degrees right now it was cold this morning but it's starting to warm up now and it is 70 degrees uh, set for the inside room temperature of my house and I've got this in the window cooking out at about 105 almost 110 degrees right now and it may get hotter later in the day but at this point I really don't care that's plenty enough for just using some simple materials. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and this build. It's one of the most simple, simple prepper projects we've ever done here on the channel. And I hope to continue to find more to come that I can share with you. Now, this project, we wanted to get to 120 degrees. That was goal post that I wanted to hit. Uh, we got to like 105, 110 on it. I'll take that any day of the week. All that I was out on that really was just the cost of some command strips and a new box cutter blade knife. So it's not bad at all, and it'll help cut the heating costs. As a matter of fact, right now in this kitchen, it is very warm and toasty. I'm about to strip this coat, too, so it's doing its job. And if you do this in south-facing windows throughout your house, you can start to help cut the heating costs quite a bit, which helps give you more funding for prepping. So I hope you enjoyed, and until we see you again here at Seven Trumpets Prepper Channel, I hope you have a most blessed day. In Yahushua 9th.